Hi everybody, welcome back to another SUP Border video. I'm really happy to bring you our next level of family SUP adventure. Last year, you may have seen on YouTube, we did a one night trip. This time it was three days paddling with two overnight stops. So we wanted to paddle a little bit further. Izzy was really keen to paddle much further this year because she's a little bit older and she really wanted to take a bit more kit on her board as well, which is great to see. This was actually part of our family holiday, so we weren't roughing it the whole time. We did have some dried food, some good food, and we had some nice fresh food as well. Now we really wanna hopefully inspire you to get out and do your own SUP adventure. The way we've done stuff in this video is very much how we would have done it. It doesn't necessarily mean that you wanna do it exactly like this. And everything that we do, we've done that we're safe as a family and to our own capabilities. And if you're a SUP Border Pro member, check out the SUP Border Pro video below this video on the main SUP Border site, where we go into a lot more information about the route, the paddle, the logistics, and more information to get you out there paddling journeys like this. Well, the night before was all about packing and controlling a very excited Izzy. Here's our food. Here's our snacks. And here's our pudding and dinner. Eye patches. And teddies. And books. We've been uh, checking out the camping kit. <laughs> This is a bivy bag. I have slept in one of these in one of my SUP touring adventures before, but this one we took with us because it was small and compact, even though I didn't actually use it. You reckon you're gonna be comfy? I reckon I'll be comfy enough. <laughs> I think I'm Which gonna means I won't be. I'm gonna stick to this tent, <laughs> I think. The great thing about this journey is we actually managed to leave very close to where we live, so we didn't have to use a car, which is really, really nice. We had to get all the gear packed, sorted out, stowed away on the board. Izzy was really keen on taking a lot more gear herself this year, which is great to see. So the start of the journey was a really calm estuary. We were paddling down the estuary and out to sea. The conditions that we were gonna have on this day were gonna be a mixed bag of weather. We weren't gonna have that much wind really, but the direction of the wind wasn't gonna be ideal. It was gonna be sort of coming across on our shoulder to maybe slightly on our back at times. But the tide was going out, so it was going with us, so we used that to our advantage. Izzy paddled some of this journey on her own. She also paddled a fair amount of it on tow with us, as well as her paddling at the same time. This way we can keep the miles up and she can still enjoy the paddle and not worry about being left behind. So the first mini leg of our journey was really nice and calm and flat, but we knew as soon as we were getting around the next corner, we were gonna have the wind and the chop. So therefore it was a good time to catch up on some energy levels, get some food inside us, to prepare ourselves for what we know wasn't gonna be the most enjoyable part of the paddle. horrible really paddling paddling up um, just off our nose the wind we knew it was going to be that direction it was about 11 11 to 14 miles an hour Izzy did really well I had you on tow <laughs> this is what a sub adventure is about yeah very good um, but we wanted to get across that bay because the tide was going out still so it was with us so that's why it's a bit choppy and I wanted to get past there before the tide started to turn and come in. So over here now, we're going to paddle a little bit easier. Wind's on our back now, but definitely let's hope the, the windier conditions, which I think they are, were at the start of the journey, not the end. <laughs> Still smiling. We're going to go that way. So after that 
bit of a killer chop fest we had. We decided to nip into this really quiet cove that we found to go and grab some lunch, do a bit of prawning, play around a bit, and really let the wind and the chop settle down a little bit before we carried on our final leg to our camp spot that night. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> are you are you are you part of the videographer? Are you part of the crew? Yeah. Yeah! All I could see was your feet sticking up where I was. If you do a sup adventure, especially with kids, you've got to remind yourself it's not all about the paddling. It's a lot about having fun and exploring on the beach or on the coast or wherever you're paddling. Take time, stop allow them to explore and play in rock pools, see what's hiding under rocks. This way they're gonna really learn and hopefully enjoy the outdoors a lot more. If you want to learn even more before your trip, do some reading up of the local area. Maybe even find out what sort of seaweed you can eat, try and live off the land a little bit more. But if you don't fancy eating some seaweed, which is completely understandable, you can always cook some other stuff and cooking it with something like a Van Gogh stove is a very simple and affordable way. You can use a frying pan, you can use a hob, lots of different things, and then you can get your energy levels up very quickly and carry on paddling. We decided to wait in this spot a little bit longer for the wind and the chop to settle down, but it was also a good low tide for us to explore the rock pools and maybe catch some shrimps and prawns for our dinner later on. And also do a bit of exploring around the coves. Unfortunately, when you paddle these beautiful spots, you're not always going to find them pristine and clean and you will find a fair bit of rubbish. If we can, we do pick up the rubbish and take it even though we are on a sup journey. Most of the rubbish is small bits of string, cable ties, Picking it up can really make a difference and it can stop sea life getting entangled and trapped in it. Where are your ponies? Oh, scapey prawn. Where is he? What's going on right here is we found two plastic bottles in the rock somewhere and then we caught some prawns and we wanted to transport our prawns live to our camp spot because you don't really want to be eating seafood or shellfish, especially like this, dead and warm. That isn't the best way to keep your belly in tip-top condition. So by transporting them in salt water in a bottle for an hour or so, they're absolutely fine. And if you don't fancy the idea of this, I wouldn't worry too much. Half the prawns did actually escape. So then it was time to set off. The wind had dropped down quite a bit, but unfortunately the swell and the chop was still hanging around. And because we were paddling by the rocks, we were getting a bit of a nasty backwash. So unfortunately, it still wasn't a very comfortable paddle. But that really didn't stop Izzy smiling. She really was enjoying being on tow behind me, even catching some little bumps like little downwind surfing, lots of hoots and hollerers. So it's great to see her enjoying it. For us, it was still quite hard work. But around the corner, we were greeted with beautiful conditions. Flat, calm, crystal clear waters. This is exactly what we knew was gonna be around this corner in this certain wind direction. This is why it's really worth planning your route. Seeing where and when will be affected by certain winds will really make or break your paddling session. This was actually the same camp spot that we stayed in in our first sup touring adventure that we have on YouTube as well. So it was also nice that we were going back to a spot we'd already been to in the past. Just a beautiful spot to stop and get set up for the night. So then we had to get our kid up the beach, had to take all our stuff off. Then we had to get the process of getting our camp stuff together, getting some food on, which is all part of the journey. And to be honest, I think the funnest bit. Mm -hmm. 
because we've done this a few times now, we're all getting into a bit more of our roles. Lucy's really good at putting tent together, because to be honest, I haven't got a clue. Izzy's really good at peeling prawns and loves doing that for some reason, which is great. And I generally just mingle around and make sure the team are happy and get some food on. If you can find a camp spot with the sun going down, not only is it going to be a beautiful place to sit for the night, but also you're not going to have to have your head torch on so early. You have a bit more warmth in the sun as well, so that is always advised if you can do that. As far as the meals are concerned with this journey, we have a mixture of fresh stuff and vacuum packed or boil in the bag stuff like here. The boil in the bag type meals are fantastic for speed quickly getting some energy in you so if you're paddling with kids you can't spend too much time prepping dinner unless you get into shore really early so you can quickly get some food on get some energy inside them so then they can enjoy the rest of the evening <laughs> I'm saving myself a pudding what's pudding? chocolate cake and chocolate sauce oh yeah Bag. holiday Bag. And brownies. Mum, do a bit more? Then all there was to do was to relax, do a bit of fishing, watch the sun go down and just think about what exciting stuff was going to come our way tomorrow. Whether you're normally an early riser or not, for me going camping always gets me up early. And when you are awake it's amazing how much of the world and the wildlife has already been awake for several hours before you. It does remind you about how much of your life is wasted when you're lying in bed. But when we're up, our morning routine is very much swimming, fishing, snorkeling, just having a slightly gentle start to the day. So after a morning of relaxing, it's time to pack up all the gear and get ready to go again. We did take the same sort of gear as we took last year. We have quite a bit of safety equipment, we had spare paddles, we had a pump, we had several dry bags with our clothes and sleeping and camping gear. One really useful bit of equipment that we made was the tow line for Izzy. This was very simple, it was a short coiled leash and then attached to that was eight to 10 feet, three meters of floating rope, which then hooks onto Izzy. That way the coiled leash doesn't make the board pull and pull the paddler back when they're towing somebody. We found that we paddled in lots of conditions like this and using this type of tow line was really simple when you're pulling longer distances. This tow line didn't have any quick release system on it. We chose we did not need it in the areas that we were paddling. And if we were using an area we needed a quick release, we were very careful and fully aware of the dangers. So the second leg of the journey, this was a much easier paddle and we knew it was going to be on the second day. The wind was going to be behind us pretty much all of the way, pushing us down along the coast to a very easy, gentle paddle. Izzy very much started up the first hour of the paddle paddling on her own and really enjoyed the progression of when the waves were getting a little bit bigger towards the end and trying to catch little bumps and surfing on her own. But then after a while she did start to get tired so we could easily hook the tow line up and we even managed to get her on top of one of our boards as well because we still use relatively wide boards so we can do exactly this. But what always helps us, and I know it helps the kids as well, is giving ourselves nice goals or rewards when you get somewhere. It may be a little ice cream stop like we did here. Gets those energy levels up, maybe if you want to go a little bit further along the coast before you stop that night.
Lovely. So we've arrived at the second night stop. Lovely little beach. Um, Lucy has picked the farthest camp spot from the location, from the sea's edge as possible, which is right up over there. Could have gone there, but she wants to go there. But anyway, it's, it's away from the cliff, so it's the safest place to be. But we've got to walk all of the kit up. I'm a little bit knackered now. So, long walk, but beautiful, beautiful spot. So on this beach, it was a steep shelving beach, and one of the jobs was to get the camp pitch flat for putting our tent on. Izzy had just told off Lucy for using a paddle to flatten off the camp spot, but actually in this sense, a carbon nylon paddle, which is what Lucy is using here, which is where you have a carbon shaft and a nylon plastic blade, is ideal for doing exactly this type of thing when you go sup touring. Making sure you get a flat camp spot is making sure you have a good night's sleep. So it's worth prepping your area really well. And using a paddle like this is a good example of having a spare paddle and having a tool while you go sup touring. Then we started to collect firewood because we wanted to have a fire on this night. And we got our tent up. Izzy was really getting into the campsite rolls and enjoyed inflating the thermarests. We got the fire on, did a little bit more fishing. We just really enjoyed doing not very much, really. This bit of equipment is another cooker. This is called a jet boil, which is the backbone to any sup touring adventure, really. It's so quick and easy at boiling water. Great for those boil in the bag meals, again, then if you do a meal like this you can concentrate on doing other fun stuff than just cooking all night long a tiny bit more firewood collection and then all we did was sit back watch the stars and listen to the sea So another beautiful morning to wake up to. Just to repeat on yesterday really, a bit more fishing, a bit more swimming, a bit more snorkeling. Good way to start the day. And then it was packing up the carnage, packing up your camp spot, getting everything back in the bags, which is a little bit tedious, but it's all part of the adventure. Izzy was really getting good at stowing her kit and getting it under the bungees under the front of our boards and then we set off to the calmest conditions we've had on our trip so far light offshore winds which were a joy to paddle in as we were staying close to the shore Then we had a really nice surprise halfway through this paddle when we met our friends on their beautiful liverboard Scottish trawler, Southstar. Bryony and Briar even decided to join us for a short part of the paddle, which was really nice to have them come along. After a while we went our separate ways and we decided to push on and make the most of the really nice light offshore winds because the forecast was due to change later that day and the wind was meant to come in. We did come across a fairly busy beach but we knew there was a good cafe on the beach and we had promised Izzy a tasty lunch after all it is actually still our holiday so we did decide to go in here and grab some nice food. So me and Izzy had just sat on this really busy beach watching lots of paddle boards just getting blown offshore. Um, it's quite dangerous in time, isn't it, Izzy? Because people have no understanding of the wind. So people, got friends out there, please tell them to watch out for offshore winds. You can paddle them, 
and they are really nice to paddle in if you know the consequences and the problems of paddling in off the woods. Is that right, Is? Yes. Yes. Update. All the paddle boarders have made it back. Result. During our sub adventure, we're always looking out for wildlife, and there's plenty of birds and fish. Unfortunately, there was no dolphins or whales during this trip. But on the calmer days, it's always worse keeping your eyes out to the horizon. Just before we aim to leave, we've stopped at a final little beach around the corner to have a final snorkel and swim. Put your hands in the air. Hey! Yeah. The final launch. Final launch back home. And I can't quite believe how perfectly we timed it, but we got onto the water to just paddle around the corner and the wind finally came in. So it was really nice to finish when we did perfect timing. And it doesn't always work like that. Then all we had to do was pack up the kit, deflate all the boards, get all the stuff packed down. My dad, Teddy, would come and pick us up, which was fantastic, so we didn't have to worry about the logistics, having a car at the other end, or an exact time to be there. We covered over 20 miles with our paddling trip, and it took us only 20 minutes to get home with the car. Just shows you haven't got to go far to find your adventures sometimes. And then it was over. Three days of paddling, two overnight stops. What great fun. So nice to get off again, away from the busier beaches to find those quieter spots. It wasn't all easy going. We definitely had windy conditions that made a bit of chop on the first two days, but that was to be expected. And we did stop, I think, at the right point after three days because Izzy and ourselves were getting a little bit tired. Maybe next year we will go even further. We'll see. I really hope this has inspired you to what you can do on a paddleboard. Remember, always think about it safely and understand your area before you go. And if you're a Supboard Pro member, remember to check out the extra video that is going to be put on under this video as well, where we go into it in a bit more detail, really looking at what stuff we were taking, talking about how the logistics of the paddle itself and giving you a lot more tips and tricks to hopefully get you out there on the water and experience it for yourself. So from myself, Lucy and Izzy, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you found this really inspirational video and it's giving you an idea of what you can do on your paddleboard. If you want to find out more information, definitely make sure you're watching this video on the full SUP border website. There'll be more information on the post below and also the GeoSUP link will be in the description. So if you want to find exactly our route and the sort of distance we covered on each day, check out that on the GeoSUP app. Until next time, happy and safe paddling.